Hello and welcome to Microsoft Mechanics Live. Coming up, we're going to go through your options for Windows deployment. My favorite topic, per personally, if you haven't migrated your desktop in a while, we're going to walk you through how to shift to the modern desktop with Microsoft 365 with a focus on your deployment options. And we're going to talk about things like what you can do with your existing processes and tools and harness the cloud with System Center Configuration Manager using co-management with Intune and also next generation provisioning approaches with updates using not only Config Manager, but also Windows Autopilot, and how those approaches help you stay current and up to date with Windows and Office as a Service, as well as new updates there as well. So today I'm joined by Rob York from the System Center Configuration Manager team. Welcome. Thanks, Jeremy. Give him a big hand. Hi, everyone. All right, so today we're talking about operating system deployment. Yeah. You're the guy to talk about, I've heard on all of this. So a lot of people are, are maybe haven't touched OS deployment in a while. They've been, their last major deployment might have been Windows 7. What are some of the new options in terms of OS deployment these days? Well, we're reinventing the wheel, the MDT wheel, that is, to help walk through the main tasks of a de desktop deployment. For a lot of people, this will be their existing processes incorporated into the wheel, but also some new tools and guidance to help them make it easier to shift. And as you follow the steps, once you've inventoried your device and app readiness, and you've prepped your infrastructure, and you've packaged your apps, and you've figured out what you need to do, then you're ready to look at your user state, and then you're ready to start deploying your new version of Windows. We have options that span your existing tools and processes, but the old adage of if you want to go fast with Windows, you've got to go fast with Config Manager, that remains true today. You've got to be on current branch, and really you need to be on the latest version of current branch in order to benefit from the changes that we're shipping. And it's also important for your, uh, for, for your Windows 7 to Windows 10 migration. So there's a lot of new options there as well, right? Yeah, absolutely. Likewise, you can attach Config Manager to Azure and benefit from the cloud to augment your existing on-prem capabilities with all of the security and value that the cloud can bring. All right, so how should people then be thinking about their desktop deployments? Any Windows environment are going to have machines that fall into three categories. Same categories that they've always really fallen into. You have PC refresh, and here the user typically keeps the same machine, and you either wipe or you upgrade the machine, but they keep their data and their applications in that case. We also have new PC, slightly more straightforward. It's a brand new PC. There's often less to worry about, especially for new users coming into the organization. There's no data to move in that instance. And then finally, PC replacement. You're either reassigning existing hardware to a new user, or you're giving an existing user a new PC, maybe because it was lost or stolen. So again, data might not be a consideration in that case. And so today, we're going to cover all three of those scenarios, PC refresh, PC, new PC, and PC replacement. But these are all really common to really any environment. What's, what's new across these options? And why don't we start with, uh, with PC refresh? What's new there? So currently, if you're using Config Manager, you're probably using a task sequence and hopefully an in-place upgrade task sequence that preserves user files and settings. Of course, we have tasks that are built in to capture and restore user state. But increasingly, we're seeing users opt for that in-place upgrade, especially in the Windows 10 to Windows 10 scenario. That's really been made sim seamless by the Windows guys. Right, so here you've got a task sequence open. Looks like you're ready to, to edit and show something here. Absolutely. So we've added a task sequence template into Config Manager based on feedback from our MVPs, the Microsoft field, and customers that are deploying at scale to look at what they're doing to make the in-place upgrades work for them. And we've built out this template that any IT admin can go and flesh out and provide. This is kind of important because we're going to do some things like pre-flight checks. We're going to do some post-upgrade post tasks as well. These are really common things. If you want to print out or do 10,000 or 100,000 deployments, this is probably what you're going to do for the upgrades, whether you're going from 7 to 10 or 10 to 10. Absolutely. So here you talked about the prepare for upgrade, the pre-flight checks. So we have the check readiness for upgrade. But here I've added a compatibility scan. So we've, we've added the capability to not need to download the package payload to do the compatibility scan. We can do that by connecting to the content on a share. We then move into the next phases of the prepare for upgrade. And I know that my application, my Contoso line of business application, that's, that's not going to work on my new version of Windows. So we go ahead and uninstall that. Once we've passed all of those pre-flight checks, we go and do the upgrade, the fairly straightforward bit. And then we have our post-processing. So we can do some specific config for our new version of Windows. We can even then reinstall the new shiny version of the application that we just installed that we do know works on the new version of Windows. And then we can also install Office 365. 
I mean, some of the cool things here, some of the things to really, to really note. First off, pre-flight wise, things like things to pay attention to, hard disk encryption. Is your hard disk encryption going to work? Can you pause it, I guess, coming from, say, a Windows 7 machine that's got third-party disk encryption? And what's it going to look like when you come out of that in Windows 10? Are there apps that you have to replace then as part of the task sequence? How does that work? And then finally, if you've got things like VPN or AV software, what do those look like on the Windows 7 side into the Windows 10 side, and sometimes even the 10 to 10 side, depending on the, the vendors of the VPN or the AV products? And then one of the cool things, I think, with upgrade that wasn't really possible in the past, because you would have normally paved the drive or, or replaced a lot of files, is that you can actually roll back Absolutely. and upgrade. So that's where we are now. If the worst happens, we have the ability to intelligently realize in the task sequence and pick up on that failure. So first of all, we can go ahead and reinstall that previous version of Contoso line of business app so that the user gets the application back that we removed, but then also to help you with your troubleshooting. So we're going to go and collect the logs. I've added some steps to specify the username and password that are specific to my environment, capture the logs, store them off to a server share in a particular location. And then finally, we can run Setup Diag. We've worked with the Setup Diag team to make sure that that runs natively and works and is supported within the task sequence, again, to simplify your troubleshooting when the worst happens. And one thing I want to point out here as well that, that we're going to see in a bit is the Office customization tool now has an option that lets you basically remove the MSI versions of Office. So let's say you've got a Windows 7 machine with Office 2010 installed. If you use the remove MS, MSI versions of Office as the default setting, literally in the OCT that we'll see in a minute, that's actually going to remove. It's going to run effectively what you might have run in the past with things like Offscrub then install the click to run build of Office. So then you're up and running with the new version of Windows, with the newest version of Office, and ready to go. Absolutely. And that runs as part of my post customization. So Office 365 is installed, and the settings specified in the Office customization tool mean that we'll go and remove Office 2010 if it's there. So what, are the, what kind of upgrade packages do we then use when we're, we're going to actually do an upgrade? Because it's different than an install.wim or something you might have customized. How does that work? Absolutely. So in the upgrade operating system step, we're actually using what we call an operating system upgrade package. If people are familiar with 2007, it's the same as what we used to call operating system install packages. It's an extract of the ISO, so it contains all the source media for the new version of Windows. We support you injecting updates and customizing via DISM the WIM file, but it's not supported to make custom customizations that require you to recapture the image. So don't think that you can layer in applications as part of that in-place upgrade. All right, so we've seen the whole process. We've, we've talked about the package type for the upgrade. Now we're, we're ready to actually move on to the next step. And, and we've seen, that, we've seen that the logs as well. So the other things that you can do after, you know, after the, the config manager part's over, you can use it for a normal, normal replacement task sequence as well. And that's just, that's just what you would normally do, not using the upgrade task sequence if you do want to replace what was on the drive. And the nice thing with these templates, in this case, because it is a template, some of these folders might be empty to start with, but at least we're giving a nice kind of trail of clues effectively as to what you would put in there and suggestions effectively as Absolutely. to what you'd put in those templates. And these are all things that we've heard from user voice uh, from the config manager side. So thank you if you're part of user voice and giving us that feedback, because a lot of the stuff Rob, Aaron from the team have actually built into the product. So what are some of the other updates that we can do from a config manager aspect to help with PC refresh? Network optimizations are a big one that improve OSD and all the other features. Config Manager Peer Cache, we've added native peer-to-peer -peer capabilities so that you can share content between clients on the same subnet in a branch office location and to serve that content to one another without the need for a local distribution point. This also works within Windows PE. So once the, client's got, once the first client in the subnet's got the content, it will then become the peer for the clients that are being built alongside it. And then recently, we've added support for Windows Server 2016 LEDBAT. And if you've not looked into LEDBAT, this is a true network optimization that uses the most of the available bandwidth without impacting foreground traffic and affecting your user and their line of business activities. So the nice thing here as well is basically what's happening with LEDBAT is one of my favorite things. It's actually yielding to all the foreground traffic. It's letting basically Config Manager use the background traffic as much of the of the network bandwidth as possible. Not quite 100%, but almost there. And then basically it will yield to any foreground task. There's even, um, it's even really easy to actually get that configured in Configuration Manager. It's just part of the general tab if you're using a new build of current branch, part of the reason why you're going to want to go to current branch builds of Config Manager. But 
I know there are other options in terms of connecting SCCM and Config Manager or, or Config Manager to Azure services. So what are some of the options there? Absolutely. We, we want to allow customers to bring the value of the cloud to their on-prem existing SCCM environment. And traditionally, Config Manager was limited to the local network, maybe to the VPN to give you management of your clients as they were on the internet. But now with Azure Cloud Services and SCCM, you can manage those clients wherever they are in the world. As long as they have an internet connection, we're able to manage them through Cloud Management Gateway and Cloud Distribution Point. One of the big changes that Cloud Distribution Point represents for customers is a move from a fixed price model of buying a server and putting it on a network location to having this pay-as-you-go cloud service where you're paying for the content that you're delivering to your clients. But with the customers that I've spoken to, the risk of sticker shock hasn't translated to actual sticker shock. Really, it's, it's the fear of the unknown. So look at the pricing for Azure, and you'll see that data is very, very cheap. And actually, it, it, it works out very cost efficient for customers to manage those internet-facing clients. And the nice thing is here, as you can see here with the Cloud Management Gateway, basically, you can use this to actually configure the Cloud DP as well in one, in one um, modal here that we see. If you've got the CMG running, that's going to proxy into your on-premises policies. And Cloud DP obviously lets you use basically Azure as a distribution point to be able to deliver packages to any client, however they're, however they're connected to the internet effectively. Absolutely. In 1806, we've merged the two roles. So you can have a cloud management gateway and a cloud distribution point in the same as your role. It reduces the complexity. It reduces the number of certificates that you need. Just makes it easier for you to deploy one thing, have internet-based client management. And the other cool thing is that the content is coming from Azure Blob Storage. So it makes the Cloud DP very, very scalable. It's not being delivered via the VM that sits at the front of the Cloud Management Gateway. The clients have been redirected to Azure Blob Storage. It's really, really fast and really, really efficient. And remember, most of these updates, you're going to need Config Manager, Current Branch. Is everybody in here on Current Branch right now, pretty much? So if you're not on Current Branch, this is where some of this new stuff lights up, stuff like LeadBat. So that's, uh, the, uh, the update here to Cloud Management Gateway and those configurations. So uh, let's move on, though, to another common Windows deployment scenario. We've just talked about PC refresh. That's going to be, for a lot of people, maybe 80% of their estate as they move to Windows 10. What about new PC? This is usually when you purchase a new PC. The user might not have user state or might not want to keep or retain that user state. Um, what do we do there in terms of uh, new PC scenarios? So customers can continue to use SCCM and operating system deployment as they've been used to for probably the past decade. That's not going anywhere. But what this often has meant is that IT admins are spending a lot of time, money, and expense creating, maintaining, and just generally looking after the images that they need to roll out into their environment. So we developed Windows Autopilot to help you get out of that business of developing and maintaining your images. And this allows you to work with your OEMs to ship the device directly to the user with that signature image so that they can have a device provisioned straight into a secure and productive state without the need to go through that time and expense of creating, shipping, and maintaining those images. Right, and the nice thing is you also get Azure AD join as part of this. So the great thing is once these PCs are in, then basically as they're kind of re reassigned to other people, they will have the benefit of basically having a, a, a build that's going to be compliant to your policies. The autopilot service will then see them, configure them, and make them business ready uh, as, as it would normally do as part of the new PC scenario, even as you reassign those to other users. So now I want to show you how this is all set up actually on the Intune side. So here in my PC, I've actually got, um, I've got the device management portal open. By the way, if you're not using the device management portal, it's devicemanagement.azure.portal.com. Uh, portal.azure.com, sorry, Portal device management.portal.azure.com. So this will actually give you all of the device management and kind of the client OS and ops management set of tasks up there in the left, uh, left hand column. The nice thing is, so let, let's go through um, autopilot. It's part of the Windows enrollment process. And here you can see we've got Windows enrollment selected. I'm just going to click into a deployment profile and um, show you how the process works in general as to how we would basically create an autopilot profile. Here I've got one already created. But just to show you some of the properties um, and settings that we have here, what I want to be able to do in the autopilot case is really streamline the user experience. So this basically says I'm going to hide, I'm going to hide in this case, the EULA so that the users don't see end user licensing agreement. I can hide the privacy settings. I can make sure that, um, that I can get rid of any, any of the 
uh, account options. In this case, we want to maybe we want to go to standard users for every user that actually gets an autopilot provisioned PC. And the nice thing is, usually on a Windows machine, as you guys probably all know, the first user who initiates the install is going to be a local admin on that box. Now with Autopilot, we have the ability to make sure that that first user is a standard user. So once they connect to the internet, once we see that that device has been basically uh, attached to our tenant, our Azure AD tenant, then we'll say, OK, let's customize the install process. Uh, let's customize Ubi. And now it's going to apply all these settings to that machine. The user goes through a customized experience. Intune sees it, enrolls the device, does all the rest of the, um, the policy management, the, the app provisioning, all of those things until it's business ready. So the other cool thing with this is we've got, we've got a lot of great partners on board. Right now we've got Surface on board doing this right now from, from Microsoft, as well as Lenovo and Dell that are, that are ready with more coming. So the second step is part of the deployment profile. We just announced there's a way to do dynamic device assignment as well with this. So let's say, for example, you have an order ID. You, you might be a big company that's got lots of different departments ordering hardware, and you want the finance team to be part of a certain group of mach machines. You can have them get a certain set of images that are different than maybe the engineering team or human resources team. So there's a lot of great capabilities there, a lot of great ways to kind of customize that experience. There's also a really great immediate value you can get from enabling co-management in Config Manager. Because in a co-managed state, the device is enrolled into Intune, you can use Intune to automatically apply an autopilot profile to your existing non-autopiloted devices. Intune can automatically register them with autopilot. So if that device does need to get reprovisioned or it gets reset for whatever reason, the user presses it and they don't realize what they're doing, it's going to take them through the autopilot experience. So it gives you a great way of mirroring the experience that you've deployed for your new devices in Autopilot for your existing devices that have been around for six months, 12 months, however long they've been around. So it's really great immediate value you can get from co -management. Let's show what that looks like here. So here we have a way to actually use Config Manager in the task sequence to do something called Autopilot for existing devices. The nice thing is we can actually have Config Manager run the entire task sequence. It's effectively, as Rob was mentioning, dropping in effect, a, a small JSON file here that does all the things it needs to get the autopilot uh, bits and configuration on that machine. That will then enroll it. It will get, make it attached to part of, as part of Azure Active Directory. And then, again, upon reassignment, just like an autopilot, if you buy a new PC, even though this is an existing PC in your environment, it's going to have consistent user experience. And then it's going to be able to be reassigned to subsequent users and be enrolled and, and known to your organization effectively after that. So, so pretty cool stuff there as well. And for those of you that want to have a co-managed state at the end of that, you can have Intune push the Config Manager agent over the Cloud Management Gateway that I was talking about before. And that will result in an autopilot through to the co-managed scenario. All right, so let's take this one step further, though. Now we've talked about all the things that you would do for a new PC. Refre or sorry, PC replacement is one of those things where it's like a new PC effectively, but you've got user state that you want to move maybe from the old PC into the new PC. How does that work and what are the options there? So traditionally, customers have used USMT to manage their user state of applications and data. Now, one thing that you can consider and attach to the cloud is use OneDrive and specifically One, OneDrive known folder move. And you can push a group policy to your devices that allows you to sync the devices into, uh, sync the data, sorry, into OneDrive for business, which means that the data is already in the cloud for the user so that when they get the new PC, the data comes down and you don't have to think about data migration as specific stages of the deployment. Their data is just in the cloud ready for them to consume. And kind of as you saw here, it's, a, it's capturing the, the desktop folder, the pictures folder, and the documents folder. It's not migrating the rest of the user state that USMT would have migrated in terms of application and Windows settings, but it's really getting the data that hopefully people want to take from their old PC into new PCs. The nice thing is you can do this earlier than your deployment before you start pushing down Windows images, making sure that everything has had time to migrate. Then you can start rolling out upgrades. And the other side benefit here is the files are synced to OneDrive. They're protected. And you can always do things like file restore, for example, if you need to, or get to them from other devices like mobile, whether it's an iOS or an Android, another Windows device in a secure way. Now, there's something else I think that's one of the biggest updates that we've had. It's around the servicing. So let's, we've talked about now all the three different uh, up, update or upgrade types and the, the OS deployment types refresh, new PC, and replacement. Let's talk about the servicing options that we've got as well with Windows 10. Can you, show, can you explain kind of what's up, up there, what's new? 
As you've probably seen, we recently announced that all feature updates of Windows 10 Enterprise and Education, that's the crucial bit, starting with version 1607, will now be supported for 30 months from their original release date. And going forward, all future feature updates, starting with 1809 and that target a September release, will be also supported for 30 months from their release date. Future feature updates that start with 1903, targeting a March release will be, continue to be supported for 18 months. So it's that split mechanism of 18 and 30, depending on when they And release. that's also the same with Office 365 Pro Plus. So lots of really good updates here in terms of the, update, the feature updates and the, the model there in terms of having more months of support per build. You can now skip a year, sometimes two years, between major OS releases. So we've, we've covered all the different deployment options today. Thank you, thank you for joining us. Hopefully this is enlightening for a lot of people that are looking at their migration. Of course, you can catch more on the Desktop Deployment Center, center something that's brand new, where you can learn about all the steps that we talked about today. We just released this onto GitHub and onto docs.microsoft.com. One other thing I want to talk about is the brand new Desktop Deployment Essentials series that we also launched with Brett Anderson and me presenting all the steps that you just saw on the Desktop Deployment Wheel. So all these things are available now that you can start looking at, you can start reading, doing, doing all the research for your deployment. Hopefully this, this will help you in terms of your journey to get to Windows 10 and staying current in Office 365 Pro Plus. And these are all things that we've built for you, for the IT admins out there that are getting, uh, getting modernized on, on the desktop infrastructure. So hopefully this, this helps you out in terms of your, your journey into Windows 10 and Office 365 Pro Plus. That's all the time we have for today's Mechanic Show. Thank you, Rob, for joining us today, Thanks and we'll see me. you next time. Thanks, everyone.